Good evening, East Vale STEM Academy parents. Welcome to our annual parent engagement information session. Uh, we would love to be with you in person today. Unfortunately, COVID still hangs around here. So um, we want to make sure you have this information as soon as possible. So we decided to do something virtual and post it. First of all, we want to start with some introductions, introduce ourselves. I'm Dr. Kim Schwalt. I've been in East Vale for 14 years as an administrator here. Uh, I was the principal of Ramirez Intermediate most recently for about six years, and then I worked before that as an assistant principal and a dean at River Heights Intermediate. Um, before that, I was a teaching coach and I taught biology, chemistry, and AP Chem, so STEM is my thing. I love it. Um, just on a personal note, I've been married 25 years this year. We won't tell you how old I was when I got married. We'll keep that a secret. And I have two kids. I actually have one at JFK just down the road, and I have one who is looking forward to coming very soon to Eastville STEM Academy. All right, and I am Mrs. Kelly Howell. I have been an administrator for six years. I am not new to Eastville as in 2006, I worked with a team of people to help incorporate the city and I was on the inaugural city council. So very huge proponent and community activist for our wonderful community. I have taught middle school and elementary and I have also done special ed and general ed. Uh, my husband works for the sheriff's department in Orange County and we have three wonderful children as you can see by the picture there. Two of them oldest boys, they go to Reagan Elementary and we have two cute labs that like to tear things up. Uh, and I just love Eastum. I love how it can positively influence the workforce and the IE and, and love what we do for the community here. Being new to Eastville STEM Academy, I started in March last year. Uh, I am just so excited to see all our students back on campus. Um, these are just a few of the pictures that we've been able to get of what's happening on campus. Our students are building things and they're solving problems and they're taking you apart uh, anatomy um, figurines and they're just doing a lot of hands-on stuff and it's amazing to see. And uh, we will keep trying to post pictures on our social media accounts so you as parents can be involved and kind of see what's happening here. Uh, you can kind of spy on your kids. I like doing that with mine too. So parents, it is so important to get plugged in with us. I know that sometimes, you know, you want to volunteer at the school site or you want to do things outside of COVID times, uh, but you are that working parent that doesn't have that time. That doesn't mean you can't be engaged because we know many of you are still fully engaged. So a few tips to help you get your students started out this year on the right track. One is make sure you are connected to Parent Connect, uh, that's Q you can actually have weekly emails sent to you about your students' grades. Now, some people have been told that, you know, sometimes the grade might not be updated right then. You are also welcome to go into your student's Google Classroom and your student can add you as a guardian onto their account so you can see the grades in real time that the teacher's posting in there. Super helpful for parents. Uh, you can get report card access, upload student documents, and also see your student's attendance on Q Parent Connect. I will be honest, attendance is gonna be a little tough this year, right? Cause we're trying to get them out of bed and get them on a new schedule that they haven't been on. So we're gonna be paying close attention to attendance and we want you to be able to see that in real time also. Make sure that your contact info is up to date. Uh, one, so we can get a hold of you if the student's not feeling well, we can get them home. And two, so we make sure you get all of the wonderful text messages and emails. Here at ESTEM, we don't send uh, phone messages, the, the voice recordings often, and we try to limit what we send. So you are just getting it either all in one message updates um, through our wonderful community newsletters or uh, just really important ones sent out. Uh, also, please look at our Friday flash. Currently, it's coming from uh, the main campus. Uh, hopefully in the future, we'll be able to get one that's a little bit more uh, centered just around ESTEM. And uh, please get in touch with what, uh, know what your teachers are offering for their communication. Some are on Remind, some are on Google Classroom, but as a parent, if you just sit down and spend that extra, you know, 30 minutes in the beginning of the school year and say, hey, this class, what does your teacher use? This class, what does your teacher use to your student? 
and make sure they're hooked up to it, they can't escape the updates. So that is a wonderful thing to do. Uh, but please follow us on social media. We put a lot of cool things on there for you guys to know what's going on on campus and our website, we try to have updated with as much information as possible. And really cool, Dr. Schwelt has been working on getting us a new website. So in a couple of weeks, you will see that coming. So one of the things as a parent, I'm always concerned about um, where my child might be able to get some support. Uh, we wanted to make sure you're in the loop on that. Uh, office hours is probably the first biggest thing. And Miss Howell has been here and seen it in, um, in production. So she's gonna talk to you a little bit about how office hours works. So uh, office hours is the primary intervention and enrichment for our whole campus. We are so fortunate. It is built into our uh, class time during the school day. It is on Thursdays and Fridays from 9.36 to 10.06. It's about 30 minutes and students get to choose which class they go to. Super important because your student can actually say, well, I'm struggling in physics. I need some extra support from the teacher here to learn this concept. Um, and they can actually go to that physics class. How students do it is they look at the OH menu. Every teacher inputs into the menu what they're doing every week. Students go on the menu and they pick the course that they wanna do or go to for that week. It can line up with uh, whatever personal goals they have for the academics. It is super important. So the first thing we will ask when a student's struggling is, is where are you going to office hours? Make sure your kids are on time and they choose wisely. We also have off, uh, after school tutoring that's coming up. Um, we will have students who are helping and teachers as well uh, in our student union. And students, specifically freshmen and sophomores, can come in and get some extra assistance on their classes that they might be struggling with, homework, help, that type of thing. It'll be one to two weeks, uh, uh, one to two days a week. Um, starting is probably in September. We're recruiting our students right now. What we're finding is most are available on Mondays and Wednesdays. So those are likely the days we will be offering it because of course we need them here. Um, we also have um, teachers who are super willing to help uh, no matter what. So setting up appointments with teachers, we have so many teachers who say, come see me at lunch. And it's their, their, their lunch, they, they don't have to give it up, but they do or they stay afterwards, or um, they can Zoom with students. Um, they do all kinds of different things just to help students keep, keep up. So um, if you, students have tried everything else, then they wanna set up an appointment with a teacher, that's awesome too. Um, counselors, our counselors are fabulous at supporting students with their mental health, but also if they're having trouble um, just trying to stay on top of things, right? Sometimes high school is a little tough for that. Uh, counselors can help in that way. And both um, Kelly and I are here to support students whenever uh, that's needed. So give us a call. The easiest way to call us is call the Roosevelt number and push number three. Option three gets you straight to the STEM office and then ask for either one of us and we will uh, see what we can do to support you. We also have uh, the science and engineering research project here at STEM. Um, this is a, an acronym, SERP, that brings fear into students' lives. They, they become very scared when we say the word SERP, uh, and we really don't want that to be the case. We want to make sure our students going through a STEM Academy are very, very capable researchers when they leave, because we know a lot of science and engineering careers will require them to know how to do some research in order to um, be innovative or to solve problems. So we really want them to know how to do that. We have altered our SERP a little bit this year and we will continue to alter it. We wanna make it so it's really good for kids and good for teachers and good for everyone. Um, so ninth grade is a little bit more guided than it has been in the past. The research project will actually occur within the science classrooms or the engineering classrooms and ELA our English language arts will teach them how to do the research and cite textual evidence and things like that, which they would have taught anyhow, but they'll teach it with a science focus. Um, so they'll get a lot of good skills 
um, but a lot of the research projects will look similar in ninth grade between students. 10th grade, there's a little less similarity because it's a little less guided. We want to Take, take the hands off a little bit. They're more mature. They can handle a little bit more. Um, so there's a, a few more options in experimentation, but there's still um, basic topics that students have to fit their experiment underneath or within. It's like an umbrella, uh, and it should fit within the chemistry content. However, I've already heard there's a few students who are just like gung-ho and ready to do the SERP, and it doesn't bring them any fear. They love it, and um, they wanted to do something without under it's not under the chemistry content and of course we are okay with people who who want to they already have a project in mind and they want to go for it and it is um, a project that is able to be done so we will support students who who want to do that as well 11th grade this is the real deal this is the actual like i get to go out on my own and try something and experiment and write it up right so currently because uh in 11th grade and juniors have not had to do it before. It is running through our physics class, our East End physics class with Miss Bergen. Um, it does not have to relate to physics though. So unlike the first two years, it doesn't have to be physics related. It could be all kinds of different things. Uh, there's a lot more freedom for students and we will be looking into providing coaches or having students sign up with coaches just to help them through the process a little bit. We are hoping that their 11th grade um, SERP is something they can um, revise a little bit, um, edit a, a tad and move it into ISEF, International Science and Engineering Fair for their 12th grade. Because for, if um, you're a senior and you have something that goes through ISEF, uh, there are some scholarships that come with that for college. So we definitely wanna give our students the opportunity to have access to those types of fabulous opportunities. All right. So parents, a while back, pre-pandemic, we were having discussions with all of our families about an E-STEM booster organization. We were able to nominate some. However, the rules for boosters say we have to re-nominate uh, a board every year. That board that we nominated in, as fabulous as they were and willing to get things done, didn't even get a chance to because the pandemic hit. So we couldn't even create a formal organization. So we are asking that we come together and find some amazing parents. Maybe it's some of the people from before, maybe it's some people that are new and that they come together to create a new booster organization to support our program here. Uh, just imagine if we could send all of our students, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th graders on specific field trips to get them in-depth knowledge into how some of our pathways work to spread that. Uh, real world uh, experience for them. It would be amazing. And that's what our booster uh, program could support. So we do have a timeline here, very important. If you would like to nominate yourself or you know somebody that's amazing, it's not you, but you know someone else and you wanna tap them on the shoulder, please send them our way. We are going to be sending out a ballot and you could nominate uh, members for the board, president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, and um, those ballot nominations are going to be due September 1st, and then you can see the timeline for there. We need to get our board members in place for a meeting on September 15th, a training, and if you think, wow, I'd love to volunteer, but I'm not quite able to be a board member, then don't worry, we have plenty of options for that too. Plenty of things that you could do to support us here and uh, a Google form will be coming out if you're willing to spend a little time or a, a ton of time. Two more wonderful opportunities we have for you is any parents in the STEM fields or you know someone in the STEM field, we have our SERP panel. That's where students present to a panel. Part of our uh, project-based learning at the gold standard is that we have an authentic audience for students to provide feedback to. And that panel is actually uh, presented to by our students, as you can see in the picture there. And they get authentic feedback from people that are actually working in those fields. It's wonderful. So if you are willing to do that, sign up on the form we're gonna send out. Uh, another opportunity is the speaker series. During office hours this year, we're gonna be asking students if they want to, to uh, join some speaker series. Here's some uh, professionals in the fields 
and, and get exposure to a whole lot of different occupations that they might otherwise have not known about. Here's another opportunity to get involved. If you have a business that is STEM related or know someone who does, we are always looking for ways to have our students have some hands-on real world experience. Uh, it could be in the form of an internship um, at the end of a pathway. Of course, we have the three pathways, comp sci, engineering, and medical. Um, or it could be some volunteer experience that might help a student really uh, determine whether or not this is the career path for them. Uh, all kinds of different options. So we definitely would like to hear from you if you know someone with a, a business like that, that we could partner with them and provide some more opportunities, real world opportunities for our students. And sadly, I'm doing a shameless pug for Watchdogs and Mares because it's a fabulous program for parents to get onto our campuses and walk around, say hello to kids and really help us uh, put in place that culture of positively, positivity and parent support that we want. Right now, however, we are not able to have volunteers on our campus. As soon as we do, you will see us pitching for this. And that brings us to the end of all the different ways that uh, we would love to engage with you this year. Um, thank you so much for spending time with us this evening or whenever you happen to watch this. Uh, please know we are going to post this on our website so you'll have access to this presentation and all the links that are involved. Um, and please give us a call if there's anything that you have questions about or um, are wondering about or any way we can help. Once again, thank you so much for your time and have a great evening.